is remember this. When you're in a room, if you're the smartest guy in the room, go to a new room. <laughs> so you're never the smartest person in the room. And as long as I'm friends with Felicia and Chris, I'm not the smartest guy in the room. And, and it's, it's great to be around them. What's really exciting is that because of all the work that we all do uh, on, our, you know, on our various things, I can call up Chris and say, I was thinking, do you want to blah, 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 and he goes, ah, oh! and then we do a thing. <laughs> I said to Felicia, we were working on, on Eureka a couple of seasons ago, I said, I, do you want to write a Fox comic? I have an idea. And she said, what's the idea? And I told her. And she said, yeah, let's pitch it to Dark Horse. And then we just went and did it. So, like, I'm very lucky in that when one of us gets an idea, one of us can usually t take that idea and make a thing where something wasn't before. That's very cool. Thank you so much. And I think I speak for a lot of people when I say you're an inspiration to us. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you. First, thanks for coming to Toronto. It's my pleasure. Secondly, I've got a question. About five years ago, you did a podcast with Ron <coughs> Choi and Jessica Corbin. Yeah, right. And um, I really enjoyed it. And at the time, you kind of seemed to be sort of on the brink of becoming the celebrity spokes advocate for Linux. Yes. What happened? Um, why are you right up there with Tux as, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think how I can answer this without getting like, without s speaking in base 64. <laughs> I believe very strongly in the open source at uh, Ethos, and I believe in open source software, and I believe in, in the open source movement. I am vehemently opposed to software patents. I, I hate uh, DRM. I hate. Uh, I do not like walled like gardens, and I, I really do not like um, uh, hardware and software uh, makers telling telling me the consumer this is the only thing you're allowed to do with the thing that I made. It's just I'm an old, old, old 1970s, 1980s hacker and I like to be able to, to mess with my things. Uh, having said all of that, uh, when Apple released OS X, it was everything that I loved about Linux with slightly more stability and a slightly but don't you boo me. <laughs> no. Yeah, boo him. <laughs> a little deeper software base. And, uh, and quite frankly, it was easier for my wife to use. And, and that was, I think, that's what I think was really important. And listen, Linux community, if we ever want to compete with the likes of Apple and Windows, we have to stop arguing about which fucking desktop is best. It doesn't matter. It's, it just doesn't matter. It is It doesn't matter that someone can take their thing and modify it. You know who compiles kernels? Not normal people. <laughs> that's not a thing they care about. They want something that's stable, that's easy to use, that's reliable, that, is, that, is, uh, uh, that has a lot of hardware and software support. We've come a long, long, long way in just a decade. Um, but uh, you know, we still have a little bit of ways to go. Something I think is very interesting is that the Android operating system is a Linux-based operating system, but they never say that it is. And, uh, and I think that's, that's, that's unfortunate and a bummer. Um, but I run, uh, I still run Linux in virtual machines on, uh, on, my, on my iMac at home. And uh, I still think that it is a fantastic way to take a netbook and make it awesome. Um, but there came a point in my life where it was, you know, you can only advocate for so many things before you become like a professional advocate. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were things that I thought were more important, like ending a decades long war. I thought it was time to like go and advocate for those things. I don't have a question. I just wanted to offer a suggestion for tabletop second season. Then don't do that because I'm only taking questions now. Sorry to be a dick. <laughs> if you can frame it in the front of a question. Would you? Would, would, <laughs> you're going in the right direction. Yes. Would I play uh, the Game of Thrones board game <laughs> next season? It's a I would actually fun. very much like to do some things on Tabletop next season, if we get one, where we are able to spend more than one episode on a game, where something maybe goes three or four episodes. Uh, but to do that, we're going to have to come up with some kind of secondary release schedule, because 
you love the Game of Thrones game, I love the Game of Thrones game, we play that, there's a small section of the audience that's like, yeah, four weeks of Game of Thrones, and there's another part of the audience who's just like, oh, four weeks of this game? And, and it's, I think it's really important that things live in one episode block. So I'm going to be really interested to see what happens in the next uh, two weeks because we have a two-part episode that is fiasco. And the first episode, which goes online Friday, is the first act right up to the tilt. And then uh, two weeks from that, it'll be the second act. And I'm going to watch very closely to see how people respond to having something split over two episodes. And that will decide for me if we can do some big box games like Eclipse or Twilight Imperium or Descent or things like that next year. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Hi. The question probably should have been asked yesterday, but I guess we ran out of time. Uh, you told the anecdote you have very strong feelings about you see the word excellent. How about, how about this weekend? Has it been excellent? It's very oh, much been oh. excellent, yes. I'm sorry, I couldn't, I said it again? What's your mother and father out of the generation uh, called the Taj? I can't, I'm sorry, I can't hear because he's making a noise. Anybody else help? Yeah. I know he's got a gift for you for your birthday. Okay. I was wondering if you could come up or if we can take that up. Oh, you'll have to take it. It's con rules, I'm sorry. It's a, a July 29th, it's your birthday. Because, uh, oh, thanks. Because it's present. Thank you. You want to have? Um, yeah, I. Um, you have a great day. Thank you very much. I hope you have a great day as well. I'm going to be 40 at the end of the month. And, and um, my, uh, so my best friend turned 40 last week, and I called her and I said, So tell me the truth, Stephanie, how is it? And she goes, Right, I'm not going to lie to you. It's pretty much exactly the same as it was yesterday. <laughs> Which was such a relief to me, because I go like, I was like, hang on a second, I gotta, okay, we can go out to dinner, but I'm gonna go take, I'm gonna grab my metabolism to go with us. <laughs> and there's just a sign in the room that's like, out. <laughs> Will's metabolism will be back in, maybe. <laughs> yes? I, I was wondering, I was game night with my friends, yes. and they're not really gamers, so if you had like a good game suggestion, we already have Munchkin and we have Ticket to Ride as of yesterday. Yeah, so any of the games we play on tabletop in the first season, because they're all, I, I chose games specifically that were great introductory uh, games for, for players who, uh, who might be new to the gaming hobby. Uh, I would recommend uh, Settlers of Catan. That's a very fun game. I would recommend a cooperative game called Pandemic. It's very, very hard, but you're all working together. I recommend a wonderful card game called The Resistance that is uh, all about figuring out who's loyal and who's a traitor, and it is so much fun. Uh, and, and like you can, you can end up playing that game all night long. And of course, the greatest game ever created, Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> Sack? Yeah, it's a truck packing game. You like get a card with a, a truck on it, and yeah. you, you're moving, and you only have certain space in your truck to pack all your stuff. Yeah. And you have little blocks, and you have to pile them into your truck. It's really fun. It's very fast. Yeah. You can still use your mind, and you should try. I've it. never heard of this. If you had said packing sack, I would have thought that it was like a, a porn parody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks for your question. Uh, I was only here today, so I'm not sure, but have you encountered any Sparks McGee cosplay at Plurus? Yes, there was Sparks McGee cosplay yesterday, and it made my day. <laughs> I was very happy to see it. Thank you. What are your thoughts on the new game system, getting the people up off the couch and the full motion playing, you know, like Guitar Hero? I really don't like those. I, well, I love Guitar Hero. Okay. I'm crazy about Guitar Hero. I love DJ Hero. They're fantastic games. Um, I'm really not crazy about using my body as a controller. Really? Yeah, it doesn't do a lot for me. Um, I, I, I think it's fine that, that you can, you know, for people who do like that, but uh, it's, not my, it's not my preferred method of gaming. Cool. Well, that's I mean, but also, you know, like, like I'm, I'm such an old school gamer that if there's more than one button on the controller, I'm like, what's going on with this? <laughs> Hi, um, I'm 
Ottawa, and the highway between that one and was called the Highway of Heroes. And last year, on my way to this convention, I was in front of a parade returning a soldier from Afghanistan. And one thing I love about you writing is how insightful you are, so I would love to hear your opinion on why we know more about you than we know about our own parents, and we probably don't even know the name of that soldier. Why do we worship you and not them? Um. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Well, I can't say why we know more about me than we know about our own parents, because that gets into very complicated family dynamics, and everyone's family is different. Uh, all I can say is that if you know more about me than you know about your parents, that's probably sadder for them than it is for you, and I speak, say that to the Father. Um, I will tell you why we don't know the names of the soldiers who were killed in these wars, and I'll tell you why, at least in America, uh, why when when the the completely and I listen I apologize in advance for I'm going to be overtly political here um, when uh, when we ended a completely unnecessary illegal immoral disastrous <laughs> it was like it was like someone just took the card and turned it from war to not war and nobody cared and nobody said anything and it's because the ruling class in America. <coughs> makes the, uh, the cost of war borne ex solely by the poor. And the middle class never feels it. We don't make any sacrifices in my country for, for wars. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't touch anybody. Nobody really feels it. The people who feel it are military families and the people in their communities. It's not talked about on the television news. The Bush administration prohibited f photographing of people arriving at Dover Air Force Base because, oh, we might actually think, well, people are dying in another country. And why are they dying again? I forget. Could you tell us that lie again, George Bush? That'd be great. <laughs> and, um, I'm just a stupid, I'm a stupid actor, and, and I, I, I'm not military. I don't have, like, my grandparents fought in World War II. My dad was in the National Guard, but I don't have that strong tradition in my family. So I, you know, I don't mean to offend people who actually do make a real sacrifice uh, for their countries and, 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 and make that choice to go. Um, I think that if politicians had to send their children to fight and die in wars, we would not get into wars as readily as they want us to. figure out what the point is. Uh, but, I, but I very much honor and am grateful for the sacrifice of every soldier who puts boots on the ground anywhere in the world and the families that stay here and have to hope every time the phone rings that it's not that phone call. much for spending some time with me today. Please find the people who make this con happen and tell them thank you. It's fantastic. You are so very, very lucky to have it. And I hope to see you again at some point in the future. Be well.